news around up on prince miller entertainment tv remember guys to like share comment and follow so guys our president emerson nangagwa has moved Winston chitando from the ministry of mines and mining development to the ministry of local government and public works earlier this year the ministry of mines came under scrutiny after an al jazeera expose on the alleged god mafia a term that refers to a network or organized crime group involved in illegal gold mining, smuggling, and trading, the Al Jazeera documentary highlighted how these individuals or groups exploit unlawful gold operations leading to corruption, environment harm, and human rights violations. The documentary investigates the scale of this illegal gold trade and its negative impact on affected areas and communities. Such illicit activities pose a threat to Zimbabwe's goal of reaching a 12 billion US dollar mining industry and tarnish the country's reputation, Chitando has assumed the role of Minister of Local Government, taking over from July Moyo, who has been reassigned to the Ministry of Public Service. The Ministry of Local Government has also faced scrutiny due to various tender controversies, including the Pomona Waste to Energy Agreement between Harare City Council and George Nix, fronted by Delish Guaya. The project aims to produce 22 megawatts of electricity and generate around 300 job opportunities. However, the deal requires Harare to pay 22,000 US dollars daily to Geogenix BV, which some C councillors consider excessive for a council struggling to provide essential public goods and services due to limited resources. And so that's one of the shifts I to cabinet announced when our president Emerson Nangagwa. Also, uh, am I uh, Monica Mchangwa, and I'll move off to carry from uh, the Ministry of Information. To Ministry of Women, Affairs, Gender, and Community Development, she replaces uh, Dr. Stembiso Nyoni, who is now the Minister of Industry and Commerce. Mchangwa was in the spotlight this year when she failed to respond to basic questions during an interview with uh, Newsroom Africa about the state of the country's economy and recently passed criminal law codification and the reform amendment bill, also known as the Patriotic Bill. During the interview, the minister appeared to have difficulty explaining the details of the bill and what entitles The bill seeks to amend the country's criminal code and introduce few offenses related to undermining the authority of the government, among other things. The bill makes it a crime to participate in any meeting where sanctions or trade boycotts against Zimbabwe are considered or planned, regardless of whether the sanctions are targeted or general. Similarly, it is a crime to attend a meeting where there is talk of military intervention or the overthrow of the constitutional government in Zimbabwe. If someone raises these issues at a meeting, you then promote or encourage them. You may be charged with crime even if you do not know the agenda beforehand. Punishments for offenders are not specified in the bill. Mutangwa's failure to provide a clear explanation of the institution as Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, ZEC, further raised earbrows. During an interview with Sophie Mukena, the international news editor of SABC News, Mchangwa mistakenly referred to ZEC as Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Cooperation and eventually settled for Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Company. This incident sparked doubts about her suitability for the position of government spokesperson as it indicated a lack of understanding regarding a crucial government institution. Many individuals began questioning her suitability for the role in the light of this episode. According to reports, Mchanga was among the ministers who fell short of their targets since last year when they signed performance contracts. The progress of each leader is being monitored and guided by the National Development Strategy 1, NDS 1, the country's economic blueprint. Cabinet ministers, permanent secretaries, local authority CEOs and CEOs of state-owned enterprises all signed performance contracts under the integrated results-based management system. President Nangagwa introduced these contracts to promote a culture of high performance among office barriers. The Office of the President and Cabinet OPC said that the contracts will be evaluated based on delivery, effectiveness, management, and implementation. 
so guys that's the latest here i don't know why she is still the minister in the first place but anyway and do my mirror as I get out and do some of the shifts I had when I present in Nangagwa. So, we'll be keeping you guys up to date here with the latest. And also, uh, her husband has been promoted to the cabinet, he's now the minister of all veterans. And so, this is a weekly news roundup on Prince Milan Yutsemi TV. Thank you for listening, thank you for watching. Bless up.